Hi, hello there. This is Sarabino once again, and to all the science enthusiasts. Hi, Mr. Rabino here, and to all. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Rabino here, and to all. <laughs> I got so good today. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Rabino here. Welcome to today's session. To all the students out there and to all science enthusiasts who enjoy the passion of learning scientific stuff, I welcome you very much in today's lesson. So for today, uh, we are going to tackle about one of the fundamental concepts of Earth science. And that is all about... Hoo-ya! plate boundaries <laughs> so what are we going to do so well let's not wait any longer so let us start right away our discussion in today's video we are going to discuss about the different types of plate boundaries now the question here that we need to ask is, what is a plate boundary? Well, to be more concise, what is a boundary? Well, you might find different meanings of the words in the dictionary. Well, in a sense, um, a boundary is like a separation between two regions, right? If you find that one in your dictionaries. But what is a boundary as described in plate tectonics? Now, to understand what is plate boundaries, you have to go back to the concept of plate tectonics. As described in plate tectonics, it explains to us the different mechanisms of how these plates are moving. And it is mainly governed by the different driving forces as well as the resisting forces of plate motion. And the overall interaction of these forces results or generates the overall plate motion of our crust. So how do these relate to the creation of plate boundaries? Well, as a result of this movement, a separation or shall we say a boundary is created in the process. So that is technically known as the plate boundary. Now, a plate boundary is just the edge where two plates meet. And most of the geologic activities, like for example, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, what else? Mountain formation. Um, they do take place in plate boundaries. And how do these tectonic activities relate to plate boundaries? So that's what we are also going to focus in our discussion for today. So to start with, we have to describe the different motion as described in the plate boundaries. So, in the plate boundary, plates may move in either of these three types. They may diverge from one another or they may move away from each other. They may converge towards each other or they may also slide past against each other or this is technically known as the transform plate boundary. So technically, there are three types of plate boundaries uh, as described by the motion of the plates to, um, from each other. We have the divergent, we have the convergent, and then we have the transform plate boundary. So let's discuss them one by one. And what are the consequences of these movements to our Earth's crust? So let's begin with divergent plate boundary. Well, a divergent plate boundary as described a while ago is just the movement of two plates away from each other. So, shall, shall we say there is a drifting process that's actually happening. So, this is technically known as spreading ridges. And as the plates move apart, new material is erupted to fill the gap. So, that is the process of divergent plate boundary. Well, what happens inside? Now, as the convection cells, or the mantle convection, which is the main driving force of plate motion, moves underneath, it carries with it the slab above it. And as a result, these convection cells may move in an opposite direction, causing these plates to move 
further apart from each other. And as a result, a gap is created in the process. And as the gap is created in the process, magma, which is of course produced from the Earth's mantle, creeps towards the created gap. And the created gap is then filled up by the magma coming from the mantle and eventually it cools down towards the Earth's crust, creating rocks in the process. That is why in a divergent plate boundary, this is usually um, known as um, the site where new crusts are formed. Now, to describe this process um, in a clear manner, it is actually the mechanism that was discovered that led to the creation of what we commonly know today as the seafloor spreading theory. Okay, that is the divergent plate boundary. Now, as you can see here, to understand this map in a simple way, so the red colored region there represents where the divergent boundary is located. And the colors also of the map also suggest to us the different ages of the rocks that are found uh, from that boundary. With red being the youngest and progressing from yellow, green, and blue comes the older rocks. So as you can see there, most of the young rocks are found closer to the divergent plate boundary. Because as what I've said a while ago, it is the site where new rocks are always created or a new crust is always created in the process. Now, the blue one is of course the oldest, um, the oldest rocks. So what happens here is that as materials are being created from the divergent plate boundary, the previous material that resides in that region are being pushed towards the sides. That's why it is called as um, spreading ridges because in that process, um, the rocks are being spread and are brought to the other region. And that is typical process of divergent plate boundary. Well, a good example of a divergent plate boundary is, of course, the very, very famous Iceland. And Iceland is, of course, we know it's a country, right? Now, Iceland is actually a product of millions of years of divergent movement. Now, the plates that are involved are the North American plate and the Eurasian plate. Now, it was believed that because of this process, um, several violent tectonic activities like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions happened for millions of years. And the buildup of rocks and as well as other particles created the island itself. So that is actually the short story of how Iceland is created. And that's all for the divergent plate boundary. So take note, divergent boundary is the site where new crust is formed or new rocks are formed. And it's also called as spreading ridges. Now, let's move on to the convergent boundary. Now, in convergent boundary, this is where two plates move towards each other. Technically, because there are different crusts involved in the process, we also categorize them into three different types. So namely, we have the continent-continent collision where both continents are involved in the process of collision. We have also the continent-oceanic crust collision where the oceanic crust and the continental crust are the ones involved. And we have the ocean-ocean collision where both oceanic crusts are involved in the process of convergence. So let's describe the three. Now let's move on first with continent-continent collision. Now, usually in the continent-continent collision, this is usually associated with folded mountains or technically a mountain formation like the European Alps and the Himalayas mountain range. So, how do this process happen? Well, I'll explain it as simply as, uh, as simple as possible. Let's say, for example, let's look at my hand gestures. Now, both continental crusts, they are thick, right? But at the same time, they are very buoyant. So their tendency is that they always tend to float, right? Because they have a very um, small density. And when they 
or both of these continental crusts collide with each other, neither one of them would like to subduct towards the mantle because as what I've said, they are very buoyant. So the tendency is when they collide, neither one of them would like to go underneath the other. So the tendency is when they collide, they upwarp or they create a folded region. Much like um, the same process as when you are going to um, push the sides of the paper towards each other. And you will notice that there is a crumpling or folding effect that is observed. So that is technically the process of how continent-continent collision could create mountains in the process. So that is a continent-continent collision. Now, a good example as what we have said is the formation of the Himalayas mountain range. So we know for the fact the famous mountain range in the Himalayas or the very famous mountain in the Himalayas range, we have the Mount Everest, right? Which stands uh, at the top of the world. <laughs> so, and it was believed also that because of the convergence of two plates, India crashed eventually to the Asia. So that's the story also of how India um, came, um, came into its present day position today. So that is for the continent-continent collision. So let's move on to the continent-oceanic crust collision. Now, in the continent-oceanic crust collision, uh, it's a little bit different in the sense that both of these crusts that are involved, which is the continental crust and the oceanic crust, they have different properties wherein the continental crust is very buoyant and at the same time the oceanic crust is very dense now the tendency is like this denser crust tend to um, submerge underneath the other crust when they are going to collide so as a result because continental crust it's is much um lighter than the oceanic crust tendency is the continental crust tends to go upward and the oceanic crust being the denser one tends to subduct underneath and this process is technically known as the subduction wherein the dense crust tends to submerge underneath the continental crust because of their differences of density so where does this oceanic crust grow well, of course, it goes or descends towards the mantle where most of the materials there are being melted. And since it's being melted, it is converted into magma. And in the process, this magma becomes, of course, high in temperature. It goes up and finds its way towards the cracks along the rocks. And as a result of this, um, continental volcanoes are created in the process. So, this is actually one of the process of how a volcano is created, especially the volcanoes that are found in the continental crust. Like, for example, the very own Mount Mayon in the Philippines is created um, like this in, uh, in the process. Uh, other famous continental volcanoes around the world, well, which I'm going to show later. So, that's it. Like, for example, as what I've said, we have the Andes Mountains in the uh, Europe there. It's one example of the uh, um, volcano formed under this process. And you have to take note, class, that most of the volcanoes that are produced of this type are active ones. Because, of course, as long as there is a subducting plate, there will always be a source of magma where this volcano would eventually get its magma from. So, technically, volcanoes of this type are very active. Okay? So, that is all about the continent oceanic collision and at the same time another type of collision is also evident in convergent plate boundary and that is the ocean ocean plate collision this is where two oceanic crusts collide now here is the thing both oceanic crusts we know for the fact that they are very dense okay and because they are very dense when they collide with one another, the tendency is that they tend to sink below. And as a result, when they collide, both of them would like to submerge downward because they are denser. So as a result of this process, 
the subducting plate is bent downward to uh, form a very deep depression which is now what we commonly know as the trench there you go and the world's deepest parts of the oceans are found along the trenches like the marianas mountain uh, marianas mountain uh marianas trench rather which is of course 11 kilometers deep so they believe it was believed that we have only um searched or mapped out the 30 percent of the marianas trench and the remaining 70 percent is still unknown to us that's why class um Most of the creatures that are found in the Mariana Trench are somewhat weird or somewhat um, different from the ones that we see on the surface. So like for example, um, if you go to the Mariana Trench, you might happen to see some of these um, creatures there. So as you can see, they are not so common to us. And eventually, I would bet that if you see them um, right then and there, you would eventually... <laughs> I would personally get afraid seeing these kinds of creatures. Uh, and this is how a uh, an oceanic oceanic collision um, could form a trench, like the Marianas Trench. Okay? So, so far we have three types of convergent plate boundaries. We have the continent oceanic collision, we have the continent continent collision, and then we have here the oceanic oceanic collision. Now, Let's move on to the last type of plate boundary, which is, of course, the transform plate boundary. Now, in a transform plate boundary, we can somewhat create a comparison between the other two types of plate boundaries. In, in divergent plate boundary, this is the site where formation of new crust is formed. Well, in convergent boundary, the older crust are being submerged and are being destroyed in the process and are being recycled also um, in the process and here in transform boundary there is actually a deformation of the crust because of the sliding motion of the plates now this is not so common in ours in the surface But one of the very famous examples that I could give you is, of course, the very famous San Andreas Transform Fault system. So, have you seen the movie San Andreas Fault, right? So, maybe um, there's a good chance that the <laughs> happenings in the movie would actually happen in real life. So, it's because um, usually when transform plate boundaries uh, move, they uh, most of the time generate earthquakes in the process. So, That's actually the summary of our um, discussion of the different types of plate boundaries. So to generalize everything, there are different types of plate boundaries. We have the transform plate boundary, we have the divergent plate boundary, and we have the convergent plate boundary. Each of these type of plate boundary moves in a different manner And that because of the motion that they experience between two plates, different tectonic features are also generated or created in the process. Overall, um, the presence of plate boundaries would somewhat also help shape our planet. I guess I have to end my presentation here. So... Thank you so much for listening for today's discussion and I hope that you are going to bring with you the learnings that we have shared through this discussion. So thank you very much and I hope you have a good day. <laughs> so thank you so much and God bless you all. Bye! Bye!